taking times out of your busy schedule to come to this, our annual Crime Victims' Right Public Ceremony. I'm Janice Brazil Cummings, the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Department of Justice, Office of Crime Victim Services. We have a very wonderful program in store for you today, and so we ask that you would sit back and relax and uh, just take a deep breath and be glad that we had this opportunity to come and share together. We think this is a very, very special day today. Not only here in Wisconsin, but we believe for our country that this is a very special day. It's a day to observe and promote the rights of crime victims. And we also take this time to honor crime victims. And uh, as importantly for us in the office, we think it's important to promote and show off, if you will, persons who advocate on behalf of victims. So again, on behalf of the entire Wisconsin Department of Justice, we thank you for coming today. I want to pay recognition to one special person, and that's my own Milwaukee County Sheriff, David Clark. Thank you for coming, Sheriff Clark. We appreciate your time being here. And at this point, we will have a musical selection by Michael Ross. Michael is a uh, lieutenant of the Milwaukee County House of Corrections, and he will come now and render a musical selection. Good afternoon. The lyrics from this song are the sentiments of African American tenors, the past, present, and future. Oh, out and tell our story, let it echo far and wide. Let them hear you. Make them hear you. How justice was our battle and how justice was denied. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight that sometimes there are battles that are more than black or white. And I could not put down my sword when justice was my right. Make them hear you. Go out and tell our story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only ones. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Your sword can be a sermon or the power of the pen. Teach every child to raise his voice and then my brothers then will justice be demanded by 10 million righteous men make them hear you when they hear you we'll be near you Thank you, Michael. Justice for victims, justice for all. It is now my great opportunity to introduce and present the Attorney General. J.B. Van Hollen was elected Wisconsin's 43rd Attorney General in November 2006. He assumed the office of Wisconsin's top cop on January 1st. The Attorney General quickly established himself around our state as a person who is committed to public safety and public safety in every community around the state. He 
He has proven himself to be one who has the ability to join forces and to collaborate with persons of different backgrounds, persons of different cultures, and persons of different political persuasions. People say the hallmark of a good public servant includes the ability to communicate, to communicate with the public, to listen to the public, and to, to appreciate and even to value the opinions of the electorate. A good public servant also values the many diverse people that works for him and works with him. A good public servant must also have integrity and strong principles. And I stand here today to tell you that Wisconsin is blessed to have such a person as J.B. Van Hollen. He is a great, no, he is an outstanding public servant. Attorney General Van Hollen began his public service career as an assistant public defender. He has served the state as the assistant U.S. attorney. He's also been the district attorney in both Ashland and Bayfield counties. I stand today to tell you that crime victims and survivors around this state are very, very fortunate to have, to have an attorney general who is sensitive to their needs. And not only is he sensitive to needs, but he also advocates for the needs of crime victims. We in our Office of Crime Victim Services, we regularly talk to our counterparts elsewhere around the country. And I want to tell you that we know that we are in good hands as an Office of Crime Victim Services with the Attorney General as our lead. And so it is my pleasure and distinct honor to present to you today a public servant who I have come to trust, who I have come to admire, and who I have come to appreciate and deeply respect. Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen. Thank you, Reverend Cummings, very much for those kind words. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here this afternoon. It really is a tremendous honor to be able to be here. I can't even begin to think that I can live up to the expectations that would be placed upon me based upon the remarks of Jan up here. But it's a tremendous challenge that I willingly take on. When I was sitting there next to Tina Virgil, who just last year was the Director of Crime Victim Services for this department, and uh, now serves the Division of Criminal Investigation, which is wonderful to make sure we have a, somebody who is very focused and experienced in crime victims' rights working in the law enforcement end, too. When I was standing next to her, it reminded me of about a year and a quarter ago when I stood in this very place and took the oath of office to become your Attorney General. At that time, of course, I took the oath of office to make sure that there was justice for all. The theme of our Crime Victims' Rights Week here in Wisconsin this week. And justice for all is something that I wanted to continue to focus on. From my earliest years as a district attorney, I knew that our job wasn't necessarily to put the bad guys away under every circumstance for as great a period as we could. Justice didn't necessarily mean maximum penalties. In some cases it did, in some cases it did not. What justice meant was making sure that we dealt with those offenders appropriately. What justice meant is that we made sure that people had timely disposition of their cases. What justice meant is that we reached out to victims, that we reached out to witnesses, that we gave them our support and that we made sure that they had the resources at their disposal that would, in the best way we possibly could, make them whole again after suffering their victimization. Can we ever make victims whole? No. Once you've been victimized, we can't take that back. We can collect restitution. We can pay money through crime victim services to make sure they get the resources to rehabilitate. We can make sure that they get therapy if they so need it. We can make sure that we can pay for some of their lost income or things along those lines, but we can never take away the hurt 
we can never take away the victimization. We can perhaps, and we do on occasions, rehabilitate the criminals, the people who victimize these people. However, even though they may be able to go on to lead a normal life, the victims always have in the back of their mind what they incurred and what happened to them. I am committed as Attorney General to make sure that we do have justice for all. And justice for all starts with having justice for the victims of crimes here in the state of Wisconsin. It's an honor to be here because we have had many successes in the state of Wisconsin for crime victims. And I think it's important to touch upon a few of them because I don't know that people necessarily remember them from day to day. It's great to have the sheriff from Milwaukee County here because the first successes in the state stemmed out of Milwaukee County. The nation's first, the nation's first victim witness program was created in the Milwaukee County DA's office. We were on the cutting edge here in Wisconsin. The first national conference on battered women was sponsored by the Milwaukee Task Force on Women in Milwaukee in 1976. Wisconsin was one of the first states, along with Nebraska, I believe, to abolish the marital rape exemption. Wisconsin passed the nation's first, once again, cry, Child Victim and Witness Bill of Rights. And Wisconsin once again passed the nation's first Crime Victims Bill of Rights. Wisconsin was then one of the first states to enact a law to enforce victims' rights with the creation of the Wisconsin Crime Victims' Rights Board. At the Department of Justice, we do everything in our power with our Division of Crime Victim Services to make sure that we're mindful of not just the prosecutions, not just the perpetrators, but also the victims. In addition to the numerous things we do at the Department of Justice to make sure that we serve justice for all and to represent the state, we process thousands of applications from victims seeking reimbursement through the state's Crime Victims Compensation Program. We train several hundred criminal justice professionals every year to understand and administer crimes victims' rights. We support many local victim service organizations through the administration of state and federal grants. We provide informal mediation to victims who need assistance, understanding, and exercising their rights. We provide training and technical assistance to county victim witness programs. These are all contained within the mission statement of the Crime Victim Services Division within the Department of Justice. And obviously, as you can tell, under the leadership that we have had there and under the leadership that we have there now, that mission statement is certainly being met to the best of our abilities. We gather together today knowing that we have accomplished much. We've accomplished much in the state of Wisconsin, being the first to do so many things to help and to honor crime victims. But I know as one, and I believe everyone in this room knows that being the first isn't enough. We have to continue, and we have to grow, and we have to do everything in our power to be the best, the best that we can to giving justice to victims because they are the ones who deserve the justice first and foremost and more than anyone else. If we don't continue to push that stone up the hill, the stone will eventually start coming back down the hill. We can't rest on our laurels and all the programs and successes we've had at risk of not advancing, keeping up with society today, and finding new, additional, and hopefully improved ways to help our victims. That's why I'm very pleased to say that we are trying to take the next step in the Department of Justice to make sure that we have a victim witness protection plan in the state as well. It's something that has existed in parts of the state over the years, that over the years has fallen by the wayside as we attempt to make budget cuts. Some of the first cuts come on behalf of, protect or of protecting witnesses and victims from the criminal element when they are awaiting trial, 
when they're out there facing their perpetrators out on bond or still on the streets. I'm pleased to say that in an attempt to move that ball forward, our office has been working with District Attorney Chisholm in Milwaukee County and with the Office of Justice Assistance in Wisconsin to try to get some funding, to try to provide some resources out of the DA's office and out of our office uh, at the Department of Justice to try to have a pilot program where we can protect these victims and witnesses that will hopefully enable us to put more of the wrongdoers behind bars, but at the same time protect those people who have already been victimized from being victimized again. I would like to share with you a short video. It speaks volumes of what these rights mean to victims, in the words of the victims themselves. years ago, justice was a very different concept from what it is today. It had very little to do with the victim of the crime. It was all about the state and the criminal. The victim had no input into the process at all. It was very different. It is evolving. It is bringing victims the ability to make changes in our system. Before the ambush took place, I believe I thought justice worked in a vacuum. That is not what I believe justice is now. Justice cannot work unless everybody works together. You have to believe in it. You have to be willing to participate. My husband was killed in the Pentagon attack on September 11th. district court in Alexandra to testify and to have a voice in the process. 9-11 family member, we, we suffer every single day, single, for every single hour in our life. And um, we just want them to understand. We need to continue to advocate that crime victims' rights are upheld in every court and every time they go to the pro board and with the police and that that it doesn't fall short for any crime victim so that you know that what happened to you is not just left on the side at the at the crime scene i think a lot of people think you know that justice is 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 retribution i don't think that is really what justice is about. You know, justice is about being able to, to, to go to sleep at night. Justice means faith that I can do something, that my voice matters. Justice must be equal, and justice for crime victims should be at the head of the table. You know, it took me 30 years to find my voice. I had never met another victim of sexual assault until I spoke out and then I found out they were all around me so I'm their voice now you know, I'm their voice I get to talk for them you know until they can find their own one day I tell my story so that I can help save lives in hopes that we can at least make progress to ending domestic violence I don't want to see Families go through 
what me and my family have gone through. And it takes a community working in concert together to solve the problem. that, I think we're all able to see from the perspective of victims themselves how necessary it is to protect their rights and establish justice for them. But whereas we have laws established in the state and the country which create and draw the lines as to what's criminal behavior and what's not, and we need prosecutors and law enforcement officers to enforce those laws. The creation of these various laws that I referenced earlier in the state of Wisconsin to protect victims' rights isn't enough. We have to make sure those rights are honored and enforced as well. The various agencies, district attorney's offices, victim witness coordinators, and others throughout the state of Wisconsin do a phenomenal job of enforcing that state statute, those state statutes. What we need to do, however, is to make sure that those victims out there know that they're not going to be at the whims or the disposal of given individuals in their locality. We all know that our prosecutors' offices are grossly understaffed, and in the context of trying to do their business on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes things may get lost in the shuffle. We need to make sure that everyone knows, including the victims, that there is going to be a remedy if their rights are not met as well. Because of that, 10 years ago, the legislature created a board specifically for that pur purpose, a board that has served very ably for the last 10 years, called the Wisconsin Crime Victims' Rights Board. The role of that board is to oversee the law, to enforce the law, and make sure the victims have a place to turn if they believe their rights are not being met. It is a great pleasure for me today, in addition to honoring victims, in addition to recommitting our pledge within the justice system to make sure there is justice for all victims, to, uh, is to honor and recognize many of those who fight for those victims as well. It is a great pleasure that I have the ability to present today awards to the current board appointees who have served a collective 36 years on the board between the five of them. A couple of them have served since its inception. I'm going to be giving each of them a plaque which states in part, your commitment to the vigorous and impartial enforcement of the rights of crime victims guaranteed by Wisconsin's constitution and laws, your service to the Crime Victims' Rights Board, and your efforts to educate law enforcement, victim witness professionals, prosecutors, and judges about the importance of treating crime victims with dignity, respect, courtesy, and sensitivity. When I call your names, board members, please step forward. First, the chairman of the board, District Attorney Ken Kratz.
Police Chief Charles McGee. Trisha Anderson. Angela Sikevich. Finally, but not least, Chris Nolan. As I mentioned, this board has a very, very large task to make sure that, that our laws are being enforced and to make sure that the aggrieved victims perhaps have a place of refuge if they need to talk about whether their rights have been met or not. These people put in countless volunteer hours and time out of their lives above and beyond what their normal daily duties are to make sure that these victims have a place to turn if they don't feel like their rights have been honored. So I personally thank each and every one of you for what you have committed to the cause, for what you have committed to the task, and for serving on the board. I know District Attorney Ken Kratz has had an opportunity as District Attorney to be on the front lines of making sure that these laws are enforced in his given county. Every District Attorney's office has the obligation to make sure that victims get the notices and the opportunity to appear in court and to know what's going on during the various proceedings. It is a time-consuming matter, but a matter that I know that each and every one of them knows is incredibly valuable. I see District Attorney Brian Blanchard from Dane County has joined us as well. It's one more example of the commitment that district attorneys and other law enforcement professionals across the state have made to crime victims. On their behalf, uh, for a few minutes, I would invite District Attorney Ken Kratz, the chairman of the board, to please come forward and share a few comments with us. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General, and, and good afternoon. As the District Attorney of Calumet County, in a small uh, rural county representing uh, not only uh, citizens of uh, Calumet County but of surrounding counties, I once in a while have an opportunity to have other judges come visit our county and other judges to see how we do things in uh, rural Calumet County. Recently I was in a court hearing with a visiting judge and the visiting judge was doing an initial appearance, a domestic violence defendant charged with battery had made his first appearance before the visiting judge and told the judge, unrepresented, I wish to plead guilty. I wish to take responsibility for my actions, for the defendant's actions, and I just wish to get this case over with. This judge, who doesn't normally appear in front of me, recognized the defendant for being forthright, recognized the defendant for taking responsibility, and accepted this person's guilty plea to the charge of domestic violence battery. When the defendant reiterated that he just wanted to get it over with, this judge, to my surprise, said to the defendant, no, we're not going forward today with the sentencing because you aren't the only part of this criminal justice system. There is a victim in this case. And although it's the initial appearance, that victim has every opportunity to be here. That victim has every opportunity to make a statement, 
whether it's an oral statement or a written statement for me to consider, but more than that, that victim has a right to hear the words that I'm about to say to you. That, my friends, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is not a change in the law. That's what we've done for the past 10 years to change the culture. Our criminal justice system in Wisconsin, as the Attorney General has mentioned, has always been at the forefront of crime victims' rights. But for that judge from another county to, in front of me, in front of the chairman of the Crime Victims' Rights Board, to say, there's another piece to this puzzle, there's somebody else who deserves to be here, and we are going to have that sentencing hearing. But I'm going to hear from that victim, and that victim is going to get to participate. That victim no longer is just going to have things happen to her in this system. That victim is going to be an integral part of this system. We've had uh, members of the Crime Victims' Rights Board now for 10 years, myself and Chief McGee, our, our founding members, and people ask me whether I don't have anything better to do for, for 10 years but uh, to, uh, to volunteer my time for this. On the Crime Victims' Rights Board, what we try to instill is the same things that I do in the courtroom every day when I represent the rights of crime victims. We tell victims, we ensure victims now from the uh, justice standpoint as a prosecutor, as a law enforcement officer, as a judge, that it's not my case, it's your case. And because it's your case, I want to hear from you. I want you to confer with me. I want you to have notice of all these hearings. I want to ensure that all of these rights are afforded to you. Our crime victims' rights hearings that we've had for 10 years are an opportunity for citizens, for crime victims who feel that they have not had their rights insured or all of the rights given to them, to make an appearance before the five of us. And although most of the times the respondents have lawyers with them, and it can feel like a very intimidating process, we try not to make it so. We try to ask questions on behalf of those crime victims. We try to ask those questions that they haven't been able to, or that they've been afraid to ask those justice professionals. We take our time to make sure that those victims have an opportunity to be heard. And at the end of the day, when the process has been explained to them, when those victims feel that their rights have been insured, and when those victims finally say to us, you know what, Mr. Chairman, for the first time, I feel that I've been heard. I feel that I've had a voice. And I don't know how this hearing is going to come out, but just being heard can make all the difference in the world. We recognize, as those members of the Crime Victims' Rights Board, that these people aren't ever, ever going to remember what we said. But you know what? They're also never going to forget how we made them feel. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why we keep doing this work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. As I stand here watching Ken and listening to him speak, of course, I look past him and I see standing next to the bust of Fighting Robert La Follette, Fighting Bob. And I tell you what, I think it's very fitting for this cause because we're all on the front lines fighting for victims day in and day out. And very few have fought for them harder than District Attorney Kratz, who has not just been the chair of the board and one of the founding members, but he was instrumental in legislation that has been passed and the victims' rights being created in the first place in the state of Wisconsin. So thank you very much, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, this will conclude our ceremony for this afternoon. A ceremony perhaps albeit too brief for such an important subject matter. 
We cannot spend 364 days a year and 23 and a half hours during this day of the year putting victims out of our minds. We cannot afford to focus on them, honor them, and recommit ourselves to them for a half an hour every year. We hope that this ceremony will leave a reminder in your collective and individual selves to keep victims in your minds in the criminal justice system, not just today, but going forward into the future as well. We're honored in the Department of Justice to serve as part of that team, and we look forward to serving with all of you in the future to make sure that we have justice for all. Thank you, and God bless all of you. As you're standing, there are just a few people I wish to thank for today's activities. Office of Crime Victim Services staff, our wonderful planning committee, uh, other persons throughout the Department of Justice who are so instrumental in helping us with our video. And I invite you to visit our resource table. Also, the Attorney General will be hosting a reception in his office right after. So again, thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of your day.